Hey guys, it is a beautiful day. And so when we were planning the recording, Sam said, let's sit outside. And I absolutely agree with him. We sit in this amazing prayer garden. It's kind of the place for today's Psalm. I would suggest you go and get your Bibles. Uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm 51 the sort of psalm that we need to do in a prayer garden. My name is Pastor Pete. I have the privilege of serving in the Brookings First United Methodist Church. And every Wednesday night, we pause for a moment uh, to kind of gain strength in the middle of the week. So before we go any further, let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for the beauty of today. Thank you for the cool air, thank you for the sunshine, thank you for the beauty of this garden. Thank you that you give us strength each day. And thank you that we can pause now in the middle of the week, draw some strength from you as we journey towards the weekend. Grant us your blessing that we might discover your spirit speaking into our lives. And these prayers we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, over the last few weeks, we've had a number of meetings here at the church, literally in this garden, and we kind of developed a rule of thumb that says, for any decent meeting, which takes about an hour, there need to be five loud vehicles that go past us. So you guys can keep count to see if any vehicles do go past us. But, but kind of being in the garden was just too great an op opportunity to pass up. Psalm 51. I'm grateful to have Jenny with me. So she's going to come and sit next to me. And we will read the psalm together. We're reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression. And my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice. Or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And then the final two verses, which we believe were added. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. So there we go. Psalm 51. And... And you will have noticed as we read through, there are some really familiar pieces. Those who are regular within the life of our church, you will recognize some of the cadence of this psalm. 
But I want to take us right back to the beginning of the psalm. Listen to these words. Before we even get into the psalm, verse 1 has a kind of introductory preface. To the choir master, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. So clearly there's a backstory. The psalm has a context and this psalm then becomes a prayer in response to something that happened before. So I would like to tell us the story. I'm going to use the words of Professor James Limburg, who teaches Bible at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. He literally says, once upon a time, but we know it's a story in the Bible. 2 Samuel 11 verse 1, the story begins... In the spring of the year, the time when kings go forth to battle. But this time, the king is staying at home. The one time slingshotting, swashbuckling, songwriting soldier is sitting this one out. And then, late one afternoon, it happens. The old warrior is bored with the soaps and the talk shows, and he takes a stroll out onto the veranda. But wait a minute, he notices a woman, the Hebrew text says, a very beautiful woman, taking a dip in the pool next door. Then the former man of action goes into action. A couple of calls gives him the woman's name and reveals that her husband is away in the army. The king sends for Bathsheba, she comes to the palace, they have a few gin and tonics, one thing leads to another, they land up in the bedroom, and then she goes home and that's that. The king moves on in his life. But a few months later, there's a message for the king. David opens the envelope and he reads it. In fact, two words in Hebrew. Harach anoki. Probably better in English. I'm pregnant, Bathsheba. But the man of action springs into action again. To account for the pregnancy, he brings her husband back from the front. Go home and sleep with your lovely wife, he tells him, slipping the soldier a bottle from the royal wine cellar. But her husband Uriah refuses the offer and instead sleeps with the servants out on the lawn outside. The plot thickens and the story sickens. The king orders General Joab to put Uriah where the fighting is heaviest and word comes that Uriah has been killed in action. The king then does a magnanimous thing he marries the broken-hearted war widow. End of story. Well, not quite. One day the prophet Nathan shows up at the palace. He confronts David with his actions and David is devastated. And this psalm says, our heading to the psalm, is the sort of prayer that fits such a situation. When there's big time trouble, you call in Psalm 51. You see, King David thought that because he was king, he could do as he liked. Until God sent the prophet Nathan to talk to the king. And Nathan had the courage to confront political power and point out that even the most powerful politician in the land is accountable to God. And David fasts and prostrates himself on the ground for seven days. And you and I are left with a psalm that teaches us all about confession. And so I'm inviting you to go with me to Psalm 51. And we're going to do this under three headings. We're going to talk about confession. We'll then speak about absolution. And finally, restitution. Let's begin with confession. David 
admit his sin and writes this amazing moving apology which we now know as Psalm 51 and and literally sets an example as to how we should apologize he begins with admitting his sin verse 3 I know my transgressions my sin is ever before me against you you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight let me let me make the point apologizing is not really popular in our culture politicians deny ever making mistakes business people refuse to accept liability and parents never apologize to their children and often we point out the mistakes in other people so that we don't have to deal with the mistakes in our own lives so Psalm 51 tells us there is nowhere to go when making an apology don't begin with excuses don't try and explain your mistakes away don't blame someone else own up to your sin state it this is mine I acknowledge it because only once you have your failure on the table can you move on to step two step two which is absolution because David then asks for forgiveness I take us to verses 10 11 and 12 creating me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence take not your Holy Spirit from me restore to me the joy of your salvation uphold me with a willing spirit this is the moment of making peace with my Creator the moment when we say to our Creator I know you did not create me to be like this and I'm asking you to recreate that part of me that I messed up Psalm 51 verse 10 creating me a clean heart O God the Bible uses this word heart primarily to refer to that part of the human being that rules everything else the spring of all desires the heart is seen as the seat of the will of the intellect of feelings probably more appropriate modern terms would be character or personality recreate my character cleanse my mind might be a paraphrase you and I could use today and then verse 11 cast me not away from your presence because it was thought that God could not stand imperfection but you know that Jesus teaches we can bring our imperfect selves to God remember in the Lord's Prayer forgive us our sins I don't first have to be perfect before I can come to God I can bring who I am bring all my imperfections and come to God and discover God's renewing work in my life and then verse 12 restore to me the joy of your salvation because the fact is sin robs our joy when we have sinned we literally spend our lives looking over our shoulders in case we get found out set me free to recover the joy in my life which then takes us to the third step which is restitution David then commits himself to change his behavior verse 13 then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you verse 15 Lord open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise you see forgiveness can't be simply just saying sorry to God it also has to be fixing what I've broken which sometimes is really difficult because sometimes I do have to live with the consequences even though I say sorry to God I literally have to sort out the consequences if I see, steal somebody's property I can't fall on my knees and say Lord forgive me and hope and hope that I'm not accountable before the law 
Sometimes it's harder if I break somebody's heart. I can't demand they feel okay about it just because I've said sorry. Sometimes, sometimes restitution is a lifelong process. Restitution literally means making right what I broke. And, and my sorriness is shown in how willing I am to make right. David David spent the rest of his life making right and some of his restitution was really hard as he had to live with the consequences of his actions. But it's now up to you and me. I really would invite you to reflect on your life, to allow God's healing to take place, not to carry that stuff with you any longer. Lay it down, confess it to God. Um, as a way of doing this, we're going to play a meditation. It's, it's a song by Jason Silver, who takes us back to the psalm. And, and sit with this, and allow this to be the meditation, a way in which Psalm 51 becomes your own prayer, and your own place of peacemaking. And having, having prayed the prayer, Perhaps you might resolve to go and fix something with someone, to go and make restitution, to, to mend that fence that is broken. Before we go into this song, let me just pray for us all for a moment. Lord God, as we reflect on this song, touch our lives, grant us your healing, give us space to draw fresh, fresh breath, that we might be renewed. So guide us through your spirit as we reflect now. In Jesus' name.
from your presence don't take your spirit from me restore to me the joy salvation from the lord give me a willing spirit then i will teach all your ways and sinners will Wasn't that an amazing song? And I trust it touched your heart and has helped you to find some closure. I do want to wish you God's blessing this week. Uh, I remind us that we have services on Sunday, services at 10 o'clock. You can either visit us online or you can come in person to the CLC. Uh, we are practicing safe distancing and everyone does wear a mask for the service. God bless you. God go with you. Um, be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Good night.